So now we will be talking about Republic Act number 8792, better known as the e-commerce law. The policy behind this law is pretty simple. According to section 2 of the law, the state recognizes the vital role of information and communications technology or ICT in nation building. And therefore, dahil mahalaga ang ICT, the state makes an implicit recognition that commerce can be furthered not only through physical or kinetic means. Hindi nyo kinakailangang mag-usap ng mukha sa mukha, pumirma sa ilang pirasong papel para magkaroon ng kasunduan para mabuo ang isang agreement o kontrata. It can be done electronically. So that's what the state recognizes here. Now, what are the objectives of this law? Firstly, the facilitation of transactions through electronic means. Secondly, the recognition of authenticity and reliability of what we call electronic documents, particularly those related to electronic commerce or e-commerce. And finally, the promotion of e-commerce. In other words, so that the people may know that e-commerce is a thing. It is here and it is here to stay. All of those things are enumerated in Section 3 of the law, which you can see right now. Now, the e-commerce law gives legal recognition, among other things, to three important concepts that we will be dealing with now. Electronic data messages, electronic documents, and electronic signatures. So let's get right on to it. An electronic data message is defined under Section 5C of the law as information generated, sent, received or stored by electronic, optical, or similar means. Of course, this would inevitably cover text messages, mga PM sa chat, no, sa messenger, Viber, WhatsApp, Telegram, emails, no, as long as it contains information, information that is generated or sent through electronic means, that's an electronic data message. For example, you see here in your screen, this is a screenshot of a conversation I had back in February. I bought a book. So I bought a book from a fellow lawyer who was selling books that she got from the US some time ago. I was interested in one of the books and then I messaged her. Sabi ko, gusto kong bilhin. Ang problema initially, ang sabi niya, nako, reserve na sa iba, attorney. Sabi ko naman, I'm still interested in the book just in case hindi mag-push through. Kasi alam niyo naman, sometimes, meron tayong mga tinatawag na mga joy bidder. People who say na, I'm interested in buying this. Pero, biglang igogost si seller or sasabihin na ah, aatras na ako dun sa deal natin na gastos ko kasi yung pera or some other reason. So that's joy bidding for you if you haven't heard of that thing yet. Fortunately for me, that last person who had that book reserved, ginost niya si seller. That's a bad thing for the seller, but good for me. Kasi pe, pwede akong pumasok. So in-inform ako ni Panyera, sabi niya. Nakikita niyo naman dito. Attorney, good afternoon. Sa'yo na lang po isang copy. Hindi naman na nag-reply yung isang nagpa-reserve. Because I was so interested in getting the book, I recognized that the book is a rare find and I really wanted to read it. So sabi ko, yay, how do I pay? Sabi niya, meron siyang Gcash, meron siyang BPI, meron siyang BDO. And I said, Gcash is good. I asked for the details and I said, I will pay within the night. She gave me her details 
and she said, thank you. So this exchange is chock full of electronic data messages. How many electronic data messages can you see in this screenshot alone? There are six. So every message, that's an electronic data message within the ambit of our e-commerce law. Now, an electronic signature is any distinctive mark, characteristic, and or sound. Yes, even sound in electronic form, which represents the identity of a person. Now, electronic signatures often come in tandem with electronic data messages or electronic documents. Now, of course, there are electronic data messages that do not come with an electronic signature, but that does not denigrate or that does not decrease the viability of the electronic document. We're just saying that sometimes, or rather it is more ideal that an electronic data message or an electronic document be signed. Parang kontrata lang, parang deed lang o affidavit sa totoong buhay. Mas maganda kung pirmado because the signature of a person executing any particular deed or agreement or any document for that matter, the presence of that signature of the person executing those speaks volumes. Ibig sabihin, may basbas mo lahat ng sinabi dito sa dokumento na to, lahat yan pinangangatawanan mo. And you sign as explicit approval of everything that is stated in it. So here you see in your screen, of course, I, I redacted all, all matters na dapat confidential, you know, including my, my signature. So you see, noong sigwada nitong pandemic, all of us had to work from home. Now, of course, for, for some time, courts were closed. No hearings were held. Of course, we could not travel outside Luzon to attend our hearings elsewhere. Yung mga hearings namin sa Visayas, mga hearings namin sa Mindanao, all of those were put on hold because, well, it's ECQ here at NCR. The government is taking measures to discourage, if not outright, prevent people from going outside and traveling as much as possible. Pe pwede lang mag-travel only for the most important reasons. At yun nga, kahit na pumunta ka pa naman, kahit na considered apor ang mga lawyers, it would not do for you to travel outside Luzon since the courts are closed. There are no hearings to attend or to appear at. However, as society transitioned to a more work-friendly state, albeit working from home, kasi syempre, hindi pa pwedeng manatiling patay ang lipunan. Kahit na tayong mga tao ay nasa bahay lang, we have to figure out a way in order to keep things moving forward, even if ever so slowly. At dahil doon, nauso yung actually dapat, in my opinion, dapat matagal nang in -adopt. It just so happened that the government and even the private sector, alam niyo yung sinasabi na masyado na tayong nalibang o nasanay sa nakasanayan na natin. So much so na hindi tayo willing na mag-recognize that there are better, more efficient ways of doing things. Not because the way we do things is more efficient, but simply because we are so couched in tradition and we are couched in what is convenient at present. Kasi, di ba, change entails a shift in how you look at things and in how you do things. Merong birthing pains na tinatawag na if you are trying to adopt a new lifestyle, parang merong withdrawal symptoms na gusto mong bumalik na lang sa dati. You want to revert back to how things were. Pero dahil nga sa pandemya, both the public and the private sectors were put in a position 
na kinakailangan nilang gawin itong dapat matagal nang ginawa. Which is to do things electronically, to submit things electronically, even to sign things electronically. So we have e-filing, electronic filing, and service of pleadings and other court submissions. At dahil nga sa lahat kami na sa bahay, walang nagpiprint ng pleadings, therefore we had to find a way to sign our pleadings and motions electronically. Now enter DICT, the Department of Information and Communications Technology. They introduced for the use of the public sector Though later on, nag-expand sila dun sa private sector kasi kailangan din nila. They introduced the idea of digital signatures na registered sa isang centralized database ng gobyerno. And so we were able to affix our electronic slash digital signatures in our pleadings as you can see right here in our screen. Now that digital signature can be readily authenticated as the signature of one attorney, Emil Justin Sebrian, who is a lawyer of the Office of the Solicitor General. If there is somebody in the event that there would be somebody who contests the authenticity of that signature, they can take it straight to the DICT and the DICT will set the record straight. So that's the essence of an electronic signature. It works just like your wet signature and it can be authenticated as yours, just like a wet signature. Ang pinag-iba lang, syempre, electronically affixed. Lastly, an electronic document is information or the representation of information, data, figures, symbols, or other modes of written expression, described or however represented, by which a right is established or an obligation extinguished or by which a fact may be proved and affirmed, which is received, recorded, transmitted, stored, processed, retrieved, or produced electronically as provided under Section 5F of the law. So basically, an electronic document is a contract, a deed, or an affidavit but in electronic form. Or at the very least, information or the representation of information. So it might be as simple as an entry, one paragraph or two paragraphs of information, or something as complicated as a deed of absolute sale, albeit electronically, in, in, in an electronic format. Now, one of the landmark concepts introduced by our e-commerce law is that all of these things, these electronic documents, these electronic messages, these electronic signatures, they are as good, they are as valid as their physical counterparts. According to Section 6, information shall not be denied validity or enforceability solely on the ground that it is in the form of an electronic data message. Apply that in real life. Hindi porque nakasulat sa sampirasong papel on one hand at yung isa naman eh ipinadala through Viber, hindi ibig sabihin nun eh mas may bigat yung nakasulat sa papel. Information transmitted through electronic means has as much weight as information generated and or transmitted through paper or other conventional means. The same is true with electronic documents. An electronic deed of absolute sale has the same legal effect validity or enforceability as any other document. So of course, just for clarity, no, as we have learned earlier in this semester, if the subject matter of the sale is real property, you know, this is one of the this is one of uh, the areas of improvement in this law. Surely 
an electronic deed of absolute sale. For example, where the subject matter is real property that is binding between the parties. No problem. All right. Remember the concept of obligatory force of contracts in whatever form. But in order for it to be enforceable against the whole world, our civil code still requires that the document be converted into a public instrument. And as of this time, there is no way for a notary public to electronically notarize a document. We have remote notarization no, na hindi naman included sa subject matter natin. I, I would just want to talk about it in order to give context to what I just said. One of the new concepts introduced by the Supreme Court during this time of pandemic is that you need not appear personally anymore before the notary public in order to notarize, in order for him or her to notarize the document na gusto mong panotaryohan. Though, of course, you would tell me, di ba, attorney, ganun naman talaga yun sa totoong buhay? Well, in practice, kasi hindi dapat ganun. In order for you to be able to notarize a document, you have to show up in front of the notary public, show the notary your competent evidence of identity. So, more often than not, it's a government-issued ID card. Pakita mo na ikaw talaga yun. The notary public will read the document na nonotaryohan niya. Tatatakan niya, pipirmahan niya magre-retain siya ng copy sa kanyang notarial register. All of that, kailangan, you're there. But of course, nga, in practice, sometimes, you just ask someone to have the document notarized for you, padala mo yung ID mo, and the notary public will go through the motions. Now, during this time of pandemic, syempre hindi nakakalabas sa mga tao. And so, you can attest to the genuineness of the document, of the veracity of everything that you have mentioned in this document through Zoom or through Teams or through Messenger, what have you. Basta merong camera at nakikita ka ng notaryo, provided that the notary public resides or, or works within the same city or municipality doon sa uh, jurisdiction ng kanyang notarial commission. Hindi pa pwede kung yari, nasa Sarayaya ka, tapos papanotaryo ka sa Maynila. Under the interim rules of remote notarization, hindi yun pa pwede. So, isa yan sa mga butas ng e-commerce daw. How can we say that an electronic document really 100% has the same legal effect, validity, or enforceability as a physical document? When, at, when as of date, we do not have electronic notarization. Though, to admit, mahirap nga naman yun. In theory, workable, but in practice, it might be difficult. But anyway, as for electronic signatures, the law provides Section 8 in particular that such signature is equivalent to the signature of a person on a written document. But of course, like a wet signature, subject to susceptibility of verification. If a person, in other words, if a person contests the validity of that signature, it is up to the person who claims na pirma ko yan to be able to competently verify, to confirm and affirm that such electronic signature, ay pirma ko yan, I recognize this as my electronic signature. Ganon din naman sa wet signature sa totoong buhay. Pwedeng i-dispute na, oh, that signature is forged. Hindi ganyan ang pirma mo. Now, it is up to you to say, that is my signature. Now, like I mentioned, kagaya nung sa limitation sa pagnonotarize ng electronic documents, there are a lot of holes in the law. There are a lot of vague things. Primarily because this law is actually very old. I would think that the law is, was enacted well before its time. You see, our e-commerce law was signed into law by then President Joseph Erap Estrada in the year 2000, June 14, 2000. Wala pang 
Facebook. I think wala pang Friendster even. No Instagram, no Spotify. Google was, you know, almost just starting out. Yahoo was a much, much bigger company at the time. The dominant way to chat with friends over the internet is not even Yahoo Messenger, but MIRC. I don't think na abuta nyo yon. But you see, it was a much, much different time back then. Much of the things that we associate with electronic commerce did not even exist then. And therefore, as observed by the ASEAN Peer Review on Consumer Protection, if I may quote, apart from recognizing that consumer transactions may be facilitated by electronic data messages or electronic documents, there is no particular recognition of the complexities of current business models in e-commerce. For example, Gcash gives you a prompt whenever you successfully transfer money to another person or whenever you buy load, whether for yourself or for some other person. Is the receipt issued valid? Considering that there are no signatures in this alleged receipt, yung mga ganyang matter, yung mga ganyang tanong, hindi yan contemplated under the law. 